Well, we're back here at the Cave of Science, and we are looking at worksheet four, problem number four. We've got 65 kilojoules of energy, are added 50 grams of ice at zero degrees. What is the final temperature of the water? And again, a good thing to do is to start with a graph. So we have time, and we got temperature. All right. So, we got some ice at zero, and so we've got to melt the ice, and then we want to know final temperature of the water because we're going to add some energy to this. So we want to know the final temperature. It's going to be somewhere up there. So first thing we need to do is melt the ice. So we got to melt the ice. Well, to do that, we're going to use, and we're going to call this Q1, and we're going to say M times the heat of fusion. So we know we got 150. So Q1 equals 150 grams. And the heat of Fusion is 334 joules per gram. 334 joules per gram. So if we do that, we do our math here. If my math is right, we come out with 50,100 joules. Now we have 65 kilojoules. So 65 kilojoules over 1 times 1 kilojoule over a thousand joules and we know that's going to equal 65,000 joules. Well, we use up 50,100 are used up, but we got 65,000 to play with. So if you subtract those two, so we minus 50,100 joules, we have 14,900 joules left to play with. Well, we melted the water, so now we just want to see what the temperature is going to be, where it's going to end up at. So Q2 equals MC delta T. Well, we've got this many joules to play with. 14,900 joules. The mass isn't going to change. 150 grams. And now we can use the specific uh, capa heat capacity of liquid water, which is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. But we don't know what delta T is. Well, if we go and do the math, we'll find that delta T equals 23.8 degrees Celsius. Well, seeing we started at zero, that's also going to be our final temperature. So that's how we do problem. Oh, I should write that in there. Problem number four. Okay, let's look at problem number five. Get a new piece of paper here. All right, problem number five. We got 250 kilojoules of energy are removed from four times 10 to the second gram sample of water at 60 degrees. Will the sample of water completely freeze? Again, if we draw ourselves a little graph, it'll help to see this here. So we got time and we got temperature. Well, we've got water at 60. So we've got some water here. And we're going to lower it to zero. And then we're going to try to freeze it. So we got another two step one going. All right, so we got a cool 
H2O2 0 degrees Celsius. Alright, so let's call this Q1 again. And we got liquid water. So Q1, so we got MC delta T. About 4 times 10 to the seconds actually is going to be 400. So Q1, we have 400. And again, the, the heat capacity of uh, liquid water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And we're going from 60 down to zero. So 60 degrees Celsius. So Q1 equals, if my math is right, it's going to be 100,320 joules. And this is what we've used. So we have 250,000. And again, 250 kilojoules over 1 times 1 kilojoule over 1,000 joules. And that's going to equal 250,000 joules. So this is what we have. This is what we used. So we have 149,680 joules left. Well, we want to see if we got enough energy to freeze uh, 400 grams of water. So we'll call this Q2, and it's M in the heat diffusion. So we've got this much energy, 149680 joules. We've got, we want to know if we can freeze 400, so we're not going to put anything in for mass, and we know the heat diffusion is 334 joules per gram. So if we do the math, M is going to come out to 448 grams. We only have 400, so yes, we can freeze water. Freeze the water. Alrighty, so there's problems four and five.